What is up, Saints? I'm back with another Christian Man Reacts video, where if you've been watching, you know the intent of my content is to present good and wholesome entertainment. Whether or not I do, that's up to you. All right, so we're back at it again. Uh, we're rocking the blue hat here, the navy blue, royal blue. I don't know what kind of blue, but it looks blue to me. And uh, we're going to be, so if you've been watching, you know that means we're going to be looking at some false teaching. Um, we just finished up. I did a series uh, looking at Osteen. Um, we've gone through a bunch of different false teachers, some of the more popular names out there. Today is going to be a little bit controversial. Um, I'm going to be looking at somebody that I have high suspicions of, but that I can't outright call um, call out as a false teacher, although I have in the past, but then I started thinking I better backtrack my tongue a little bit and not speak unwisely in case this really is a man of God. I don't want to speak against him, um, but um, we're going to be looking at some Billy Graham. Uh, probably the most popular American preacher of all time. Um, very famous, filled stadiums all throughout the country um, for many, many, many years. Um, he's a he's a hero uh, to a lot of people, and uh, but I'm very skeptical of him, uh, namely because of the, some of the things I've read and some of the things I've heard, some of the clips I've seen of his. Um, there's a book out there, Billy Graham and His Friends, that exposes his ties with Catholicism, I believe. I think it's written by Kathy Burns or something like that. I haven't read it myself, but I, I do want to get to it. Um, there's uh, famous teachers and ministries out there that I trust um, that speak out against Billy Graham. Um, I can think of like Ian Paisley, I, th I believe. Um, I think Jack Chick and his ministry. Um, and and I've seen with my own two, not, two eyes uh, Billy Graham like meeting with the Pope. Um, I think I've even seen a picture of him kissing the Pope's ring. And to me, it's like the Pope is Antichrist. That that's the seat of Satan, Roman Catholicism. And any born again Christian, even if you don't have that understanding, the Holy Spirit in you ought to warn you um, if you're ever in the presence of that demon possessed man um, that this is a monster. You know, he calls himself the Holy Father, uh, proclaims himself to be the Vicar of Christ, um, pr says that he has infallibility when he rules from the throne, sits on a throne with an upside-down cross on the back, um, full of paganism, holds a pagan, uh, grotesque crucifix, um, wears the, the symbol of sun worship, uh, has the Dagon fish miter from the Babylonian mystery religions, there's just so many things like I don't know how any Christian could meet and and I believe uh, Billy Graham even said that Pope John Paul was the holiest man he had ever met that right there says all right this man has no discernment at all and um, so like uh, that causes me to question how can the Holy Spirit dwell in this man and then I've heard that at his revivals um, he invites Catholicism and when people come forward to pledge themselves to Christ um, if they're originally members of a Catholic institution, they'll be referred back to that Catholic institution. That's the enemy of our souls, Roman Catholicism. It is the whore uh, from Revelation 17, the harlot that sits on the beast. Um, she, she is the, the, the killer of saints. The, 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 she's drunk with the blood of the saints and she holds the golden cup of abomination in her masses. And uh, she's just decked out in gold and pearl, and she is the city that sits on seven hills. That is the harlot. And so how anybody could take somebody that is potentially a brand new baby Christian and direct them into the hands of these monsters that are going to devour their souls um, is beyond me. So the fact of his friendship and, and passivity uh, with Rome and his ecumenical leanings uh, causes me to be very, 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 very suspicious of this man. Um, and then you add to that that his doctrine is one of Arminianism, which um, in, um, I, there's, you know, it, depending on a person's understanding of Arminianism and how they proclaim it, I, th I think there can be fellowship, but 
full-blown Arminianism is another gospel. It, it, it's, it's anathema. It says that uh, you have the power um, to save yourself through your own will, through your own efforts, through your free will. You can make a decision for Christ and you will be saved. And then you're proclaimed saved, even though there's been no sign of regeneration. Um, so, And I'm not saying that a person cannot be saved through a Billy Graham sermon, um, because in spite of that, the Holy Spirit can still move upon a soul and save them. Uh, but the Arminian message, the, the free will decisionalism, just raise your hand, come down this aisle and sign this thing, and now you're saved. No, that's not the gospel. The gospel is you must be born again, uh, which is a supernatural act of God done upon you. It is not nothing you do yourself. It is something done to you. Um, it is a movement of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God that comes upon your heart and regenerates you and causes you to see Christ for who He is and causes you to trust upon Him fully for salvation. That's all a work of God. And and yes, the, like I say, at a, at a, in a, an Arminian sermon, as long as the Word is going forth, you have the ingredients there for salvation. The word's going forth. The Holy Spirit can move through that word. But then people are taught that it was actually their decision through their willpower that saved them. It was them raising their hand and accepting. That's the difference between them and the guy who didn't respond. Is They made the decision. So right there, it's, it's, it's a contradiction of Ephesians 2. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. You now have room to boast through your intellect or your humility or whatever it was, you decided through your willpower and effort, you chose, your friend didn't. Now there's a distinction between you and that distinction is you rather than God. Um, so Arminianism is a false gospel, um, but like I say, it really depends on it because there's lots of people who believe that th through their free will decisions, they, they accepted Christ and they were saved. And like I say, they were saved in spite of that. The Holy Spirit, because that though that's what happens when the Holy Spirit moves upon your heart, is He causes you to desire Christ. He causes you um, to respond to Christ. So people are looking at the response and not going deep one step back and saying, "Why did I respond? What caused me to desire Christ and to to look to Christ?" They stop short of that and just look at their action. Um, so there's people that do that in ignorance, and I, I would say that they're still brothers. Uh, they're just not grasping the full picture. So, um, and and so whether or not Billy Graham is a false teacher, I don't know. That's why we're going to do this video. I've read one of his books. Um, I didn't see anything overtly heretical. Uh, it, nothing stood out to me either. I don't think it was very powerful. I think it was just kind of wishy-washy. Um, lukewarm <sighs> formula, you know. If 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 we're growing in Christ, you know, there's there's the milk of the word, and then as we grow in Christ, we learn to eat the word. We get into the meat, the depth. You know, we get into the the depth of the word. We start getting greater understanding. Um, I and and I would say that that, that you know, a formula is like a a. a it's not the power, it's, 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 I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it, you know, that, like I said, there was nothing really powerful or stand out in the book, but there was nothing overtly heretical either. So, um, based on what I've seen, based on uh, what I've heard, based out of his own lips, some clips, he's, if you go on Google and you just uh, type in Billy Graham Exposed, you'll, you'll find a lot of stuff. Um, some things that he said on television that make you go, ugh. But... Perhaps it's taken out of context. Uh, perhaps you know, like I say, I want to. I want to give the benefit of the doubt. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, you know, check out a few of his clips here, one or two, and see what the man has to say for himself. And I got some other uh, of his books on my shelf that I'm gonna read as well um, before I just start calling them out. I will say that decisionalism, the free will decisionalism that he preaches, come forward and sign the card. That is false. That that is a distraction. That is not. Um, that is a false sense of security. That's a a a a, a, um, a deception. A lie. It's it's not the way salvation happens. You must be born again. And I would say that his friendship with Catholicism is a major major alert, and needs to be spoken against and exposed. 
Um, but other than that, you know, is he preaching a true gospel? I don't know. Uh, so we're going to find out here. Um, anyways, uh, without any further introduction, I got the Polar Seltzer Water Black Cherry flavor. Uh, so we're ready to go. Let's do this. All right, so here we go. We got, um, I, I just went on YouTube and did a search right here, a Billy Graham clip. This is the, actually the first one that popped up. It's from uh, Above Inspiration. I don't know if that's uh, Graham's official channel or not. Um, this one has over 2 million views. So it's uh, Billy Graham, one of the most powerful videos you'll ever watch inspirational video um, so it's a good way to start I guess right uh, let's give it a shot God said there's coming a day when I'm going to shake the world but some things will not be shaken some things remain in other words there's coming a time when the world will be pressed and there'll be no way out those times come in your life, in your home. Tension, friction, financial trouble. You're pressed, and there doesn't seem to be a way out. There is an answer, there is a way. Jesus said, I am the way. But in the midst of all this changing... So... Trying to, I don't think anybody would ever accuse Billy Graham of being a health and wealth prosperity preacher. And just based on this clip where it started, what's being said, it kind of has that feel. Um, financial problems, you know, stress, whatever it is, you're pressed in life. Jesus is the way. Like, that's not the gospel message. The gospel message isn't to escape the troubles of the world. It's not, it, it, the gospel message is not to escape our hardships. Uh, the gospel message is to escape hell. It's to escape the condemnation that is justly upon our souls. Um, the fact that we are guilty criminals, guilty of treason against the Most High, and we're going to die and be sentenced to hell forever. That We need help from that. Forget the financial troubles. What does that matter? Forget your health problems, your stressful life situations. None of that matters eternal hell is in the balance you're facing eternal damnation um so again i don't believe that billy graham was a health wealth prosperity preacher so i don't think that's the direction he's going i'm just saying that's kind of the feel i'm getting from this uh you know people are all, that, that, i guess that's why it's titled inspirational somebody could have just taken this clip and oh it's so good we can we can have all this uh happiness in life we can have light fluffiness and and no cares and no worries and and no stresses um that's not the gospel message um so uh, let's just uh, continue on here there's some things that never change think of it a moment what never changes the nature of god doesn't change that's true god hasn't changed he hasn't changed to adapt himself to our generation God is unchanging. I am the Lord God, I change not. God is unchanging in his holiness. Amen. We're all guilty Two really good points. Amen. of coming short of God's holy requirements. Amen. And we're all sinners and we're all in need of the grace and mercy of God. And that's why the Lord Jesus came and died on the cross. He died for your sins. He died for mine. And God took your sins and laid them on Christ. God changes not in his holiness. It's gospel right Let there. Me... So, I mean, he's preaching gospel. One other thing that I've heard about him is that he faded in the later years. So, like, I've heard that his early stuff was really on point and powerful and good. And this looks like it's some of his early. He looks relatively young here. Um, I, so, it was in his later years that, that um, <coughs> let's say, what do, I, what do I call the people who detract against him? His accusers? or those who are saying, hey, be wary of him, they'll usually point to his later years and say he fell off the tracks in the later years. Um, so if that's the case, we're probably looking at something that's pretty good here. And that's scary, too, because that happened with a lot of the, in the, in the, like the Old Testament, or, yeah, in the Old Testament, you read about a lot of guys that were faithful, God-fearing men, and then, then in their later years, they fell apart. 
and it's like that's scary, you know. I don't want to be a, a man of God now and then fall apart later. That's that's terrifying, you know. We want I want to finish stronger. We want to advance more in holiness and in truth every day of our lives. We don't want to uh, fall apart as we get older. We want to advance, um, so and finish stronger than we started. I tell you, because he is our holy God, he is also unchanging in his judgment. Amen. There is a judgment day coming. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. That's, that's, the Bible that's is filled so with stories of judgment. Our Lord talked more about hell than he did heaven. Mm -hmm. There is a day of judgment coming. God is a holy God. And you and I are going to stand there. And when I stand there, I'm not going to ask for justice. I'm going to ask for mercy. I need mercy. I need the grace of God. I need the forgiveness of God. And I want to tell you a wonderful thing. God loves you and he offers you tonight forgiveness and he offers you mercy. God can forgive every sin you've ever committed. So, good stuff. Like, that's gospel what he's preaching right now God can wipe the slate clean because of Christ not because you deserve it for by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast you can't work your way to heaven you can't buy your way to heaven God is unchanging He's unchanging in his love. God loves you. That's the most wonderful thing to go to bed with at night, to know that God loves me. God forgives me. God is interested in me. But I must receive him. Secondly, the word of God does not change. Amen. The Speak grass with it. And the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I settled that a long time ago. There are a lot of things in this Bible I don't understand. There are questions you could ask me that I cannot answer. I don't know all the answers in this book. How can a finite mind like mine comprehend the infinite? I cannot. So one day I opened the Bible and I said, Oh Lord, I accept this as your word by faith. Amen. Amen. That's a that's a good message. That that I I remember that day for myself too, like don't recall exactly how it happened, but you know, when you're young in your faith you hear people make arguments against the Bible and supposed contradictions. And, you know, uh, just you have to settle it in your heart that I don't have all the understanding, but God's word is God's word, and God does not lie, and God does not make mistakes. He is the author of all things, and what he says is truth. The Bible is the absolute, 100% pure, unadulterated truth, and we stand on that. And so no matter what kind of clever arguments or schemes the devil throws at me that I don't understand, or supposed contradictions... Um, which over time, you know, through apologetics, you learn that there really there are no contradictions. Every, whatever people throw at you, you can be explained, you know, through diligent study and careful observation of the scriptures. But the scriptures are the truth. You gotta settle that in your heart, um, because then you can stand against all things. You, you you're on a, a unshakable rock. So this is a good message so far. I like what he's saying. And that settled it from that moment on. When I quote the scriptures, I know that I'm quoting the word of God. Amen. It's a living word. Amen. And lastly, the way of salvation has not changed. Amen. All these centuries, the way to the kingdom of God is exactly the same. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He will never change. But you must change. All right. All right, so that's uh, my first little taste of Billy Graham, I guess. Um, and... 
I liked every single thing he said. That's, um, you know, a man after my own heart, what he's preaching there. That's that's a message that, you know, if the Lord ever called me to preach something similar, that is the gospel. That's, you know, it's he's preaching truth there. Um, so I, I have no accusation against him with that clip. Um, the problem is we get these short little four or five minute clips. Um, it's really hard to discern where a person stands. And that's why I got the books on the shelf because I feel like you, you read something in their, their own words, something that they, you know, that they've taken the time to think through and write. You're getting their inner thoughts. You're getting their heart. You're going to discover what they truly believe. And uh, like I say, um, I've seen clips um, uh, of him saying some not so good things uh, later on in his life and, and his friendship with Rome is truly, truly upsetting. Um, but it becomes a thing where it's like, where, where do we draw the line between brother and heretic? Because a brother in error is still just a, a brother. We love our brothers and, and there's a whole host of things people can be wrong on. Um, but they're still our brothers and we still love them. Um, and then the scriptures tell us to separate from heretics, to have nothing to do uh, with those that are preaching another gospel, with those opposed to the things of Christ, um, to mark those who cause divisions contrary to the doctrines we have learned and avoid them. Uh, that's Romans 16. So we have to carefully examine. So it's like, where's that line? Where does the line um, begin? Where, where does it cross from error to heresy? And I think it's in the gospel. You know, a person can be wrong in a whole host of other things. Some things severe, some things that would just make you go, oh, you know, what are you doing? And, and some things that we have to resist and call out. But at what point do we separate? And I, I think the answer is the gospel. If they get the gospel wrong, um, and, and the gospel includes the totality of it, you know, who Jesus Christ is, God in flesh, the Son of God from eternity past, sent by the Father to take on human form, um, to suffer and die as a propitiation for sins, to become sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf. He suffered and died and rose again for our justification. Um, and that faith in Him and faith in Him alone, trusting fully in Him, uh, is the means by which a man is born again and granted eternal life uh, through repentance and faith. And so that whole um, sphere of the gospel, the totality of the gospel, and um, that's, that's, that's it for me. And I think what a person does with the word of God as well, um, because in the scriptures it says that the word of God is esteemed higher uh, than his own name. That the Word of God, that Jesus is the Word of God become flesh. The Word of God and the Word of God are synonymous. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ is given to us in His living Word. It is the, it is Him. It's His Spirit in those words. It's, it's the revelation of His character in those words. We see Him in that Word. And so, how you handle the Word of God would also be an issue, I think, where there would have to be, if, if you're dismissive of the word, if you discredit the word, if you attack the word, if you, if you um, devalue uh, the word of God on, on a critical level, um, I think that would be a separation issue as well. Um, so I think, you know, um, on issues of the Godhead, the word of God, the gospel, um, if, if we're in agreement on those things, if you, if you hold that the Word of God is the living Word of God, the authoritative Word of God, and you hold that the Godhead is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, the triune, eternal, omnipotent, all-powerful, sovereign God, and, and, and you believe the gospel, um, then just off the top of my head, I, I think that we can call each other brothers. We, we can have fellowship. Um, regardless of, of the differences we have in, in a multitude of other areas, as long as those things are lined up. So my quest is to find out, do I line up with Billy Graham on these things? And, um, 
you know, like I say, I've, I, I've foolishly uh, spoken out against him in the past based on the things I had seen. Um, and then I realized, man, I need to do further work research because, um, well, like, yeah, just some clips. It's like, I feel like almost like, like um, not that he was taken out of context, but that he was not allowed to explain what he meant. And so it's like, I, I, the things I've heard him say, if I was in person with him, I'd say, well, hold on, explain to me what you mean by that, because that sounds like a, a heretical statement there. So please expound upon that. And I would definitely have to take up the, the, the Roman Catholicism thing with him and, and just, oh, that, that would be, that's, it, it, that's hard to fathom. But anyways, um, this clip here was really good. Nothing I can say against this. This was gospel. This was good stuff. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll... I, I, I don't think I'll do another Graham one next time, but we'll come back around to them um, hopefully soon here. Um, so anyways, uh, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching. I love you. And Lord willing, we'll talk to you next time.